Before we get started, uh, we ask our CD clerk to read the quote for the week. Thank you. To exercise good character daily is to be fit for life. Thank you very much. And once again, the public has asked me to remind the aldermen to put their mic uh, on their collar here so they can hear you. Thank you. Call the 14th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excuse. Decker. Here. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clyunas. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Surik. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Here. 15 present. Quorum is present. This time I'd ask Alderman Ryan to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter to the mayor from Marion Health advising that she's resigning her position on the Wellness Committee. Make a motion to accept and file. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say a th publicly a thank you to Marion Health. She's just been so wonderful on the Wellness Committee. She's always been there, uh, just a, a great person to have on that committee. And I'm going to really be sorry to, to see her leave. So thank you. Thank her for, I thank her for I, her service. I sent her a letter echoing your, your uh, praise. Thank you very You're much. Welcome. Thank you. Anything else? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. I hereby submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Alderperson Edward Surick to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired term of Alderperson Vicki Meyer, whose term expires 42009, signed by the mayor. That lies over. <clears throat> and uh, these were submitted at the last council meeting. Hereby submit the following appointment for your confirmation. Mike Warnches to be considered for appointment to the Board of Electrical Examiners to fill the unexpired position of Robert Schrader, whose term expires 4-30-2010. a motion to confirm? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Sheriff Powell Vang to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Janet Carter, whose term expires 4-30-2010. I need a motion to confirm also. I would make the motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. And Jody Brooks to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry as the Community Recreation Department representative to fill the unexpired term of Harold Beeble, whose term expires 4-30-09. Signed by the Mayor. I need a motion to confirm also. Make the motion to confirm Jody Brooks. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Next item on the agenda is a public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. First on the list is Marge Sigali. If you could step forward, please. And I need your home address, please. It's 2732 B Lichen Boy, North Savannah Circle. If you want to pull the mic just close to you so that everybody can hear. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, City Attorney McLean, and Council. I had planned on speaking at public forum at a later date, but after listening to public forum on October 6th, I can find no better time to speak than now. It seems like the issue of our fire department paramedics is still, not, uh, is still out there and mostly it concerns money. 
I truly appreciate the people who are the watchdogs when it comes to the monies the city spends. I too am a taxpayer and citizen of Sheboygan. Even though we pay rent, when, rent goes, when taxes go up, so does our rent. But there is no amount of money that can replace a human life. I realize human emotions are not to play a role in, discussion, in decisions concerning money spent by departments. But when speaking of the fire department paramedics, their job does concern the human aspect. On August 25th, 2008, I sent my husband off to work at Universal Lithographers with a hug, a kiss, I love you, and be safe. Never knowing a few hours later, he would suffer what is, what is known as sudden cardiac death. For all clinical purposes, he was dead. The quick actions of Dave Govek, a volunteer firefighter and employee of Universal, started CPR while another employee called 911. They tell me the response time of the fire department and paramedics was extraordinary. It is also my understanding the paramedics brought my husband back several times. Their expertise and professionalism was also extraordinary. He was taken to the, to the closest hospital, which was St. Nicholas Hospital, where their fine emergency department staff continued their efforts in saving my husband's life. From there, he was taken to a hospital I never even knew existed, and that is Columbia St. Mary's in Ozaki County, where the doctors who treated my husband commented on the initial response and quality of care administered by the paramedics to my husband was what has allowed, me, has allowed for me to have him today. As I stated before, there is no amount of money in this world that can replace a human life. So please, instead of criticizing our fire department paramedics, let them do their job the best of their abilities because the next life they save could be that of your own or a loved one. We also never know until something like this happens to us what fine facilities we have in the city like Coolest Cardiology and the hospitals we have. And also in closing, I'd like to bring up another matter I would like to say a big thank you and a job well done to our police chief, David Kirk, and his fellow officers who will be retiring if you, the council, approve the retirement package. They all have served this community well, and as a past older person, citizen, and taxpayer, I thank you all for the job you have done. What I like for you, what, what I like for you to retire, the answer is no. Do you understand why you're retiring? The answer is yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the list is Renee Susha. And can I have your home address, please? 303 St. Clair Avenue in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Alderman, for allowing me to speak tonight. When I left my aldermanic post a year and a half ago, I left a few items behind that needed to be addressed at a later date. The day has come to set the record straight on one of those items. I will start giving you a historical perspective during the public forum and address specific safety concerns during one of the hearings scheduled later in your meeting. Tonight you will be asked to change the zoning on a parcel of land near the intersection of North Avenue and Calumet Drive. As you may recall, three years ago, the council voted to close a section of North 21st Street between North Avenue and Calumet Drive. This little street had M&I Bank on the west side of the road and a manufacturing company on the east side. The primary reason the council was told by the police department the street had to be closed was due to a high number of accidents. Two police officers presented an accident analysis to the Public Protection and Safety Committee and the Common Council. They vehemently insisted this road had to be closed on one end to cut down on the number of vehicles that were cutting across four lanes of traffic each time someone used this little shortcut. At that point in time, I was chairman of public protection and safety. I did my own independent analysis of the situation based on information I collected both from the police department and the city planning department. It appeared to me we were being asked to close the street strictly for the sake of development, not safety. Tonight, you will have to decide if the actions of the Common Council three years ago were right or wrong. If that road was closed due to serious safety concerns, then the police should be jumping up and down, 
to get your attention and inform you how dangerous it will be to have citizens pulling in and out of the parking lot of the strip mall which is going to be built on this site. To help you understand the complete picture of what I saw three years ago, I would like to share with you a series of coincidences that made me feel uncomfortable in supporting the road closing. Now remember, I looked at both the police information and the planning and development. Um, in July of 2001, the manufacturing company on the east side of 21st Street took out a $600,000 loan from the city. One of the parameters of the loan was that he agreed to relocate his manufacturing company to the business park by the end of 2004. In September 2004, due to a financial hardship, the owner of the manufacturing company uh, was granted an extension by the council to relocate uh, his business by the end of 2009. In May of 2005, police orders were issued to temporarily put up barricades at the intersection of North 21st Street and Calumet Drive, preventing traffic from traveling through the streets adjacent to this manufacturing property. One month later, a developer met with the mayor, city attorney, and director of city planning. During that meeting, the developer mentioned the possibility of building a strip mall on the property where M&I Bank currently or used to sit. In November 2005, without my consent, a police officer altered my public protection and safety agenda by adding a proposal to permanently close North 21st Street. Public protection and safety did take the issue up on December 13th, and the police department presented an inaccurate and misleading accident analysis to justify closing the street. They did not compare equal time frames as to the number of accidents that occurred when the road was open versus when it was closed, and their oral reports um, claim that no accidents occurred when the road was closed. I believe the oral reports were inaccurate because I have several accident reports in my possession that occurred when the road was closed. So it is clear to me that the oral report was untruthful. In any event, the majority of the Public Protection and Safety Committee voted to close the intersection at 21st Street and Calumet Drive on December 13th, 2005. Three days later, on December 16th, the Public Protection Three days after the Public Protection and Safety Committee voted to close the intersection, Chief Kirk submitted a $5,000 anonymous donation for taser guns to the Finance Department. The anonymous donor turned out to be the owner of the manufacturing plant that was adjacent to the street that was just closed three days earlier. Let me clarify a few things. One thing I want to make perfectly clear. I do not believe that the owner of this manufacturing company ever called Chief Kirk and said, I will give you $5,000 if you close that road. That never happened. It's a combination of all of these coincidences that made me feel uncomfortable for closing the road for the sake of safety. I do believe that it was closed for the sake of development, and I really want to emphasize that you need to look at the questionable accident analysis because that's what was used to convince the alderman at that point in time to close the street. If the street was closed truly because of safety, then you're going to have a problem tonight making your decision on whether you should change the zoning to allow this development to continue. At this point, I'd like to ask each of the aldermen uh, to ask yourself a few questions. Excuse me, Renee, your five minutes are up. Would you like your additional one minute? Yes, please. Go ahead. What would you do if you knew a city employee was providing inaccurate information during a committee meeting? Put yourself in my shoes. What would you do if a city employee said no accidents existed during a seven month time frame, yet you have in your possession several accidents that did occur? With the aldermen we have today, I don't think any city employee is brave enough to pull some of the stunts that were going on three to five years ago. Unfortunately, three years ago, many aldermen still accepted everything city employees said as the gospel truth. Three years ago, some aldermen went as far as trying to censure me for pointing out that some city employees were being untruthful and this road was being closed for the sake of development. Your actions tonight are going to prove whether I was right or wrong. If you deny the developer's zoning request to proceed with the strip mall due to safety concerns with people going in and out of the parking lot, then I was wrong and there must be serious concerns in that area about safety. However, if you change the zoning and allow the developer to proceed, that proves I was right and aren't uh, there, there aren't enough sufficient safety concerns, and I should be exonerated from all the allegations of wrongdoings. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the list is Joanne Scribner. And Joanne, can you give me your home address, please? 3 Seneca Trail. Okay, and you want to pull the mic just closer to you a little bit? And you will have five minutes. 
Mayor Perez, Sheboygan Common Council. First of all, I'd like to preface my comments by saying I'm not speaking as someone that's holier than thou um, with an, that kind of attitude because I know just exactly how imperfect I, I am. On Friday, October 3rd, my husband and I went to the Stephanie Weil Center on North 8th Street to hear the Bob and Tom show, Canadian Mist Comedy Stars Tour at the 7.30 p.m. show. This show was sponsored by the Buzz radio station with their office being on Washington Avenue along with WHBL, The Point, and B93. I am so ashamed of myself for allowing myself to actually laugh, have laughed out loud at some of the filthy jokes that came out of those comedians' mouths. I was apologizing to God all night for even having been there and having bought tickets to see that show, to see that filth. I will no longer listen to the Bob and Tom uh, comedy show on the buzz, nor will I ever listen to the buzz radio station ever again. The so-called music on the buzz is downright dark and depressing. Personally, I would like to see the Buzz radio station removed from the airwaves and the Bob and Tom show completely out of existence. I have talked to people at the while. I have not talked to the Buzz radio station yet uh, to register my complaint and my concern and my disgust for the promotion of filth in Sheboygan. Here's a verse from the Bible that could pretty well sum up how we should live. Ephesians 4, 29 and 30, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, so that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Another verse, Romans 1, 18 through 21, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. One more verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. What does all of this have to do with the Sheboygan Common Council? Plenty. In all of your decisions as mayor and alderman, is your primary goal to glorify God, to give honor to God, to do what Jesus would do, WWJD, what would Jesus do? If you can answer yes to these questions, then the city of Sheboygan is in good hands. Some examples, the new state of the, of the art police station on North 23rd Street, a good thing. Now I know that this is still probably a controversial issue, probably something to still be debated, but overall a good thing. The Sheboygan police force, neighbors against drugs, mothers against drunk driving, and Sheboygan County Crime Stoppers and community activities like the 2008 National Night Out 25th Anniversary Walk Against Crime from Fountain Park to Fountain Park held in August. And the Saturday, October 4th, Sheboygan County Crime Stoppers event at Sheboygan Falls Municipal Building. Good things. The Sheridan Park remaining a park, green grass and trees and swings, basketball hoops and climbing wall and basketball and Lots of kids of all ages hanging out in the park, plus community picnics promoted in the park by friends of Sheboygan Parks, a good thing. And I know that this is still probably controversial and a debated thing too. Orange Cross Ambulance and the Fire Department Ambulance in Sheboygan, a choice, a good thing. And I know this is also a little controversial. On a personal note, the Sheboygan Police and the Sheboygan Fire Department Ambulance were Johnny on the spot they were there in, it seemed like in seconds, on Easter Sunday morning, March 23rd, 2008, after my mother called me at 422 in the morning to tell me that she was having difficulty breathing. Unbeknown to me, she had suffered a heart attack at home and she died that afternoon at Sheboygan Memorial uh, Medical Center. But for her, it was her homecoming 
to see Jesus so all is well with her. But I owe always a huge amount of gratitude for the Sheboygan police and fire departments for being there that day. And I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Excuse me, Joanne, your five minutes are up. Would you like an additional minute? Yes, please. Go ahead. On another subject, some years ago, the sex respect curriculum was taken out of the Sheboygan Public High Schools, which I thought was a very bad decision. This curriculum promoted abstinence only, the only way to go. There is no such thing as safe sex. The safe sex statement is a myth. Do you really think that unwed teen mothers as well as unwed mothers of any age are a good thing for the moral fabric of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, or the USA and the world, or the men that act irresponsibly? The answer is no. The answer is yes to abstinence only. Too bad sex respect curriculum was removed from Sheboygan Area School District. What about sex before marriage? What about living with a member of the opposite sex before marriage? What about recreational sex or a one night stand before marriage? What about adultery? Where does the Sheboygan Common Council, the Sheboygan Police Force, the Sheboygan Area School District, Planned Parenthood, and the social agencies of the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan County stand on these issues? Our Excuse adult. Me, Joanne. Your Thank time you. Is. Thank you for. To be continued. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on our list is Matt Walsh. And Matt, can I have an address? Uh, 828 Center Avenue, Suite 101, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak tonight. I'm speaking to you as president of the Sheboygan Professional Police Association. Let me get right to the point. The SPPA has decided to make a statement tonight about the reorganization and early buyout package, pardon me, not early retirement package, I misspoke, that is being proposed. We are very happy for those individuals who are being offered incentives for early retirement. We are happy as well to be able to help sa save the money city some money. I'm terrible tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Our fear is that assurances, that the assurances that have been made will be delayed or worse, denied due to budget concerns. The assurances that I am speaking of are replacing the upper management officers with patrol officers, investigators, and detectives. Those street cops, if you will, are needed now more than ever, and in fact, were needed badly the past several years. The police department is currently six officers below the required staffing levels for a city this size. This early retirement proposal will put the police department in a situation of being 13 positions down. Many of these retirements come from the very top of our leadership. Couple that loss of experience over 230 years with a shortage of officers if the positions aren't filled, the results would be disastrous. The police department is very young and is about to become much younger. This lack of experience combined with the loss of leadership will result in grave concerns for safety. I speak not only of officer safety, but of public safety. I cannot stress enough how important public safety is. The safety of families and of children in Sheboygan is the city's, the police department's, and the SPPA's number one concern. With the recent downturn in the economy, experts are predicting a rise in crime. This is already being seen locally. In comparing crimes from this year to 2007, so far, sexual assaults are up nearly 99%, aggravated assaults are up 16%, forgeries are up 12%, and sex offenses in general are up 22%. The SPPA is concerned with saving money, but at what overall cost and risk? Liability for the city due to new, less experienced officers operating with less supervision is of great concern. The assurances of street cop and detective positions being filled as a part of the early retirement incentive are extremely important. This must be taken care of immediately. The promotional and hiring processes should begin now. This should not be put off until 2009. Those positions need to be filled and the new hires need to be ready to go on January 1. 
In summary, the SPPA requests that the retirements are followed up quickly with the hiring of more officers, putting them on street investigating and preventing crime and doing what we do best, keeping the citizens of the city of Sheboygan safe. Thank you. Thank you. And last on the list is Henry Capitillo. Henry, could you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street. That's in the town of Sheboygan. And I'm here speaking on behalf of Home Inc. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'm glad to follow the representative from the Sheboygan Police Department because that's the issue that I'd like to speak about today. Um, I also have concerns. The concern is also exactly what the association is saying that in the past, the council has said, well, we're gonna hire the police, replace the patrol officers, and that just drags on and drags on. And as of today, yes, you are not at full staffing. And it has been for quite a while that we have had shortage on the police department with patrol officers. Uh, I can remember about a year and a half ago, two years ago, I came here religiously to speak on the budget of the police department, the hiring of patrol officers, keeping in mind of what is going on within the city. And again, I, I read in the paper how uh, we're gonna have all these retirements from the police department, and, and, you know what, and I'm not here to speak for or against that. I think they have the reasons for wanting to retire, but what is concerning is that there's so many. And the time frame that we're looking at um, I, would, I would ask some of the private sector uh, representatives here that are on the council, Corey Book, Bach, who's not here, uh, Jim Gisha, if 60% of your ed top management left, what would that do to your business? What would the board of directors say when you had those things happening? Would they be as happy uh, to see everybody go like that? No, I don't think so. I think they'd... They'd want something where it was more timely and it was well thought out. And, and again, I'm not here to say no, that these people should not retire. I think they have good reasons for wanting to retire. But I think that you should take your time. And also, when you're looking at filling the positions, and, and, and I, I read the paper where I know Alderman Gish has said, well, you know, this is a cost-saving effort and we're going to be looking at saving money and in the long term, we're gonna take the cost savings and we're gonna hire additional patrol officers. And I would like to see that, that actually follow through. And to, to even go further, if the police chief does decide to retire, I think you have more than enough qualified personnel within the police department where you could have the next chief for the city of Sheboygan to come within the rank and file of the police department. I don't think you have to go outside the city to be looking for uh, a potential candidate when you have such out overwhelming and qualified staff within the, the present police department to be able to promote and to, to fill the positions that are, that are gonna be vacated. I don't think you have to go outside and look for a chief elsewhere. I think, and if, you, and, and if you use the argument, well, you know what, this is big city crime now, we're having these problems, we're getting all these things. Where was that two years ago when I kept coming here and saying we got a drug problem, we got a, ga a gang problem? Don't use that as an excuse to go outside and now to hire somebody else with outside the community. You have individuals that are within the police department that are well qualified to be able to, to promote into these positions. And I think that who's ever gonna be looking at the hiring process and who's gonna be involved, that I think you should look within the department. I really do. I've, I've had plenty of contact with some of the officers and I've talked to them and they all personally feel that there is definitely enough personnel within the department to be looking at to hire some of those management positions and, and even the chief if he does decide to retire. I would say, and, and, and you know, one of the other things is I, I've heard and I've read in the paper that you're looking at the non-union reps, you're looking at uh, the cost savings and this. 
What happens is, I can give you examples. When you hired the e IT position, when you hired the city assessor, what happens is you, you want to save money, but the people that actually come aboard actually are making higher than they normally would, their starting salaries. I mean, if you're looking at the IT position, I think the person who retired was making something close to ninety-some thousand dollars By the time you hired some person that replaced that individual, that was up in, in the mid-70s. I mean, that person worked for over 25 years to get to that, that level, and now you've got a person that comes in less than a year is making that kind of salary. How can you justify saying we're eliminating these positions, we're going to save money, and then when you go out from within and hire people at such higher salaries that you're already... Excuse at, me, Henry, would you like an additional minute? Yes. Okay, go ahead. You're already at a loss because what happens is you're starting these people at above, above the, the salary. And some excuse is, well, we got to pay this because we need to have these people come to the city. Well, my response to that is that you have qualified officers that are presently in the city that would probably want to fill these positions and also the position of the chief. I know that the mayor had said in one of the interviews, he says, well, you know, I look forward to seeing a female mayor in the city of Sheboygan. You know what? I would say I'd like to see a female chief of police in the city of Sheboygan. And I think you have more than enough qualified people within the department to be able to do that. And I think the citizens of Sheboygan that are listening to this should call you and should voice their concern and say, yes, hire within the department. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Thank you to the public that addressed the council tonight. I have some brief comments regarding the budget tonight and regarding uh, an update on the new police station. First, the budget and deals basically with some of, of, of what's going on right now. The budget has made its way to the council in a preliminary form, went to finance committee and each respective committee and has made, it will be making its way back and then on October 27th, it'll go back to finance committee I'm going to show you get another kick at the cat. Uh, if there's any concerns or any issues that anyone has, uh, please uh, speak to Alderman Gisha. If there's any questions as to your understanding of the budget, you can feel free to call me or call uh, Terry Hansen, our uh, uh, finance director. On November 7th, you would, uh, we would take that as a date where the numbers will, f will be finalized, where the numbers will be taking shape as they're going to come through uh, the, the council. November 17th, there's a public hearing. Uh, some of you may or may not have been here, but that date was, uh, we added on an extra public hearing date that's separate from the date of the adoption. Uh, the concern there being uh, to remind all that, uh, why have a public hearing on the day of the adoption if you're really not gonna be doing any changes? So this gives the people, an, again, another opportunity, aside from all those opportunities that you have to go to the committee meetings uh, to address your concerns. The actual adoption of the hearing uh, is November 24th, and there will be, again, a hearing before the adoption, and that meeting is usually just uh, for that particular purpose. Two things that came into play as we worked through the budget uh, and balanced it. As you know, when I submitted my preliminary budget, the, it wasn't quite balanced yet. It is, but it is balanced now. My special thanks uh, uh, to uh, Bill Bidner and Chief Kirk because they came through when times were rough. They understood what was going on. Uh, Bill Bidner stepped up to the plate and made some changes that, in his mind, and I trust his judgment, that will create efficiencies and cost savings. As we continue to remain responsive to the people of Sheboygan as they plead for tax relief, we have to resort to drastic moves. And we have to take a much, much closer look, a very close look, as to how we're conducting business and how that business is affecting the people and what it's costing us. So Bill Bidner uh, stepped up to the plate, made the necessary changes that uh, needed to be made, and assured me that things, will, although they will not roll as smoothly as possible, public works will be manageable. The other person is Chief Kirk. He too stepped up to the plate. 
Um, I know there's been some concern addressed tonight as to the safety, maybe perhaps compromising or jeopardizing the safety of our citizens and the police force. I thank Chief Kirk for taking the initiative to come into me and some aldermen and saying, I have a plan that will make my department more efficient and more cost effective. That reorganization that you have heard about. Chief Kirk initiated this and as I listened to it, I wasn't too much in favor of it, but as I listened to it more and more, it made more sense. The numbers make sense, the math makes sense. Emotionally, it may not make sense to see this many years of experience if you want to calculate cumulatively what that experience uh, amounts to. It may not make good sense to a lot of people, but mathematically, financially, and keeping the police department well structured, it makes sense. Please understand that no one twisted anybody's arms or pulled anybody's ears. As I said, I wasn't in favor of it in the first place. The terms were mutually agreed upon. Chief Kirk assured me that the public safety or that of his police force would not be jeopardized or compromised. I take that in full truth. This is why I feel comfortable that these early retirements are important not only to the new police, uh, to the police department, but to our budget as we look to balance it and continue to be responsive to the people's pleas for tax relief. Next item I'd like to just briefly talk about is give you an update on the police station. Uh, November 7th, which is a Friday, uh, there will be a lot of moving going on to the evidence and property rooms and anything else can be packed and ready to go. The overall department move is November 12th, that's a Wednesday, so you're looking at Friday to Wednesday. Things should be out of here. The first day of operation at the new police station is November 17th. That's when they will physically be operating out of the new police station. The radio cut uh, over uh, will be at uh, 6 a.m. and uh, hopefully, I've been assured, everything will work out. There will be no disruption. Open house, this is important, is November, uh, November Saturday, November 15th, and a ribbon cutting uh, will be held and we will be inviting people, but in general, invite anybody and everybody to come join us at this very uh, important date. The ribbon cutting will be at 9.30 a.m. and tours will be given at 11 o'clock for certain guests, aldermen, uh, department heads, city employees, and so forth. And then the open uh, house to the uh, general public will be from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. And if there's more people than we can fit in within that time frame, we'll extend it. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that people get a chance to see their new police station. Also, if some of you have driven, have driven by there, you'll see this big cellular tower that's gone up, a huge one, very modern, state-of-the-art. That is a, a, an agreement that was reached with the cellular company, and hopefully it'll, it'll be ready when the police are ready to, to move in there, but hopefully they'll be able to be using it because we will be paid a monthly uh, amount for that. So that'll be our way of recouping some of the costs for that. And uh, Attorney McLean worked out the details in the agreement and it, it turned out to be a really great uh, agreement there. I should say something else because it's really great news. As you recall, we bonded $8 million for $8 million and we borrowed a million dollars from the industrial fund. To date, we have uh, an estimated remaining funds in the, in the, in the bond of $105,549 and $387,000, $387,554 in the industrial money. The bond money that's left over may, may have some restrictions and we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, some of that cost may be able to be applied to planning and design the industrial money, there's no restrictions. As you know, it was money that had been put aside by the city of Sheboygan and that was transferred over for the, uh, for the police station. So if you take the 105, 549, 387, 554, it's $493,103 under budget. And we have a fabulous, fabulous police station. If anybody hasn't seen it, just drive by. And if anybody wants to see it, go to the ribbon cutting ceremony. You will be absolutely amazed and pleased. I visited that uh, facility at least six, seven times, and every time I walked in there, 
I came out feeling better and better. And every time I talked to the police officers, they were feeling better and better. It truly is a remarkable accomplishment uh, that this council has made to the city of Sheboygan and to our police force. So I thank you for that. Moving on, we have two hearings. One, to amend the zoning map to change the use district classification for property located in North Avenue and Kelly Med Drive from urban industrial to urban commercial classification. The second hearing for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of a paved north-south alley between South 7th Street and South 8th Street and bordered on the south by Clara Avenue. Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Uh, Renee Susha, please. And please tell us which one, which one you're addressing, the council. First one. Go ahead, I've got your address. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll wrap up shortly. Um, the majority of the information that I'm sharing with you tonight came from listening to the December 13th, 2005 audio tape of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, reviewing old council tapes and reviewing my notes and other documents given to me by the Planning Department and the Police Department. I know it will be very difficult for anyone that was involved in this uh, situation three years ago to comment on it without reviewing their notes. Um, the reason I say this is because three years ago, the primary focus of the situation was lost. Chief Kirk did such an excellent job of throwing mud at me that he diverted the attention off of his men who misled the entire council. The focus needs to go back to the issue of public safety. Three years ago, we were told that one of the most dangerous intersections in the city was located at the corner of North Avenue and Calumet Drive. With the close proximity of this dangerous intersection to the North 21st Street, we were told it had to be closed due to the safety concerns with people cutting across multiple lanes of traffic. If you think about the people that used to use that street when it was in existence, it was primarily used by people who lived or worked in that area. We didn't have many people coming from the south side of Sheboygan or Kohler or Howard's Grove to go for a joyride on that little street. It was pretty much just a subset of Sheboyganites that really used that shortcut. However, when you put a strip mall up on that site and you put the parking lot located actually closer to the intersection than where the street was, because the strip mall is going to go pretty close to, I guess, right where the street uh, North 23 North 21st Street was, so the parking lot's going to be closer to the dangerous intersection. Um, you have to kind of question about public safety. If you closed a road for that reason, how can you justify putting a parking lot where cars will be coming in and out, cutting across you know, multiple lanes of traffic? And now you've created a destination. I and mean, we just got done talking about the little road was pretty much used just by people who lived and worked in the area. Now you do have people coming from Howard's Grove and Cole or and the south side of Sheboygan all the way up to the strip mall because they're going to have eight tenants in there, which, which I think is going to be great, and I'm real excited to hear who they're going to be. But the question you need to ask again is, why didn't the police department have any safety objections when the planning commission or the Ar architectural review board looked at this project last week? And I think the answer is because there aren't any safety objections. Since this is the case, I believe you should change the zoning tonight and allow the strip mall to be built. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council on any of the two hearings? Henry? Henry, which one are you talking on? I'm talking about the same property. Same one? Event. Thank you. Yeah. I hadn't planned on coming here and speaking on this, but I've been here in Sheboygan for such a long time. I can remember when, some of you might even remember, where in that same spot there used to be a fast food restaurant. I think it was called Robbie's, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember, because I was in uh, high school at the time, that was a big parking lot there. You had uh, plenty of traffic coming and going. Um, I don't see why there would be a problem with that being a commercial site at this point, since at one point it was. And also, 
with uh, all the things that I've been hearing about the budget and the shortfalls and everything, I would think that you would want to be able to include that and increase the base for property taxes in that area. So it just makes sense to be able to do that. Now, what happened a year or two years ago regarding uh, what occurred with the police department and uh, former alder person, I think that's pretty much water under the dam. I think that uh, at this point, you're looking at what you have before you. It's a commercial site that potentially could generate some tax revenue, and I, I would recommend that uh, you look at this and, and do approve the, the rezoning because you already have more uh, growth just right across the street with uh, the Walgreens. That, and I just drove by there, and when they first came out and I, I was thinking about it, I thought, wow, how's that gonna look on there? But you know what, now that it's there, it actually looks very nice. I, I even know that uh, they repaved, well, that's my vet over there that I take my dogs to, and they repaved that parking lot also. So I think that uh, for all intents and purposes, I think that this is a good thing for Sheboygan. And I would encourage you to be able to change the zoning on that, that property just for the, uh, the property tax revenue that you're going to be able to generate. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close hearings under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Hearings are closed. <laughs> Consent agenda 14 1 through 1417. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call a roll. Warren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Zurich, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Wangaman. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 1418 and 1419 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1420 through 1426 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3. 1427 by Alderman Gisha, Clayunas, Bauk, Boren, and Montemayor, authorizing the finance director treasurer to enter into contract for the reconstruction of Wisconsin Public Service gas lines on Indiana Avenue in the amount of $75,968.43. President uh, Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, I'm going to ask for a suspension of the rules and offer an explanation. Is there any objection? to suspension of the rules. There is not. Please offer the explanation. Thank you. Um, the, uh, there's a time frame need for this. Frankly, there was uh, a miscommunication departmentally on uh, getting, this, um, getting this together, and there's a timeline window that is closing. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting that we are actually paying Wisconsin Public Service <laughs> instead of the other way around, but that's the way the rules work. Uh, so I'm asking that uh, that this be adopted um, for the amount noted. Okay, so you're making, you're making a motion. Put it upon its passage. Put it upon its passage. Is there a second? Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Okay, hold on. Alderman Rehassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Can I ask the chair just to offer an explanation as to how that number came to be the source of the number? Alderman Gisha. Gee, thanks. Um, Especially the four, 42 cents or whatever. I will uh, pass the buck to. Uh, <laughs> To uh, Paulette Enders, uh, she was at the meeting and uh, will be able to offer. It's my understanding it's a formula of sorts, but I, I did not get the specifics on that. Paulette, formula. would you please step up? Paulette is the department head. There's no need to open the floor. Thank you, Mayor and Common Council. Um, the amount is related to the length that has to be moved. 
And typically, Wisconsin Public Service, if they're going to be moving the line, they would pick up the cost. But because it's not necessary for them to move the line now, we just need it to. We need them to move that line because of the Indiana project and the, um, I guess, the significant size of the reconstruction. We have to pay for a certain length, and that's how they come up with that figure. Okay. Thank you, Paulette. <clears throat> okay. Is there any further discussion? Otherwise, I'm calling the, the vote. Please call the roll. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1428. Thank you, Your Honor. On um, agenda item number uh, 1428, um, I'm hoping Jan Wilberg is here tonight just to give us information, even though we're not voting on it tonight. I don't see her. Next meeting. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. 1428 and 1429 lies over. 1430 to be referred. Report of Committee 6. 1431 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 8032 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the applicant and failure on the application and failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Motion and second. Second, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is uh, Joseph Mendez here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Very well, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Mendez had two opportunities to appear before the committee, the second one by certified mail. He did not appear, and for the reasons you stated previously, uh, we decided, we voted unanimously to uh, deny the application. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1432 and 33 lies over to November 24th. Report of Committee 7, 1434 by law and licensing. Recommending denying beverage operators license number 8060 based on the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application, record of violations related to the license activity, and record as a repeat law violator. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, is Mark Feldy here tonight? He's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Feldy did appear before our committee on uh, October 14th, and after uh, discussion with Mr. Feldy, uh, we voted uh, uh, three to one to deny the application. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? <coughs> I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1435 through 1439 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 1440 by finance. Recommending authorizing an early retirement incentive program in the police department for 2008 and authorizing the mayor and the interim director of human resources to offer the benefits to qualifying police department employees. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. Alderman Wangman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Fellow council members, I've received a lot of contacts on this. I've talked to a lot of people all over the city. I find a lot of people are against this. 
they find it hard to understand why we have to pay people to retire. Now, I know that's not the concept that's being employed here, but I, I find that there's a great deal of objection to this. And I think every one of us, of course, is aware that we're here to represent our constituents. Each of us represent approximately 3,200 people. And you have to know that this is a very difficult issue for me because I feel very closely about the police department. I feel very strongly about uh, Chief Kirk. He's a, I consider him a personal friend as well as Deputy Chief uh, Shervin. I've known both of these men for a very long time. They're both very qualified and highly uh, conscientious officers and they've done a lot for the safety of the city and to promote uh, safety in our city. But I can't agree with this uh, concept and uh, because of that, I would have to vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you. And so it doesn't get an emotional, uh, doesn't get emotional. Please address the chair. Thomas Hurt. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'm opposed to this proposal. As I, I voted nay at the Salary and Grievance Committee, and, and I voiced some objections uh, to his proposal at the Finance Committee. And I, will, I plan on voting no this evening uh, for several reasons. One, I think that you know, we're losing a lot of experience, 230 years of experience. We're, we're, we seem to be rushing into something. I think that I'd rather see it done on a slower basis, you know, let attrition take its course, analyze the program, is this working, is it not working, and how do we fill the positions? There appears to be no succession planning plan here, and there seems to be no organizational chart that we can kind of take a look at. But that being said, um, because I fear it might pass tonight, so I would like to move to amend this proposal and add that uh, any employee benefiting from this program be restricted from future employment with the city for a period of two years from date of termination. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you. The uh, amendment is that any city employee be restricted from future employment with the city of Sheboygan for Two years. years from date of termination. There's a motion and second under discussion, the amendment only. I'm going to turn off the lights. <coughs> okay. Can I first ask who did the second, please? Thank you. Oh, uh, Vice President Boren, you go first. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would have a problem with the amendment because that would also uh, preclude uh, somebody from running for older person, which I would not feel comfortable with uh, precluding somebody to run for public office. Uh, I guess I would have some problems with, with people being reemployed by the city, but I would have a problem with, uh, I, won't consider, I won't consider the amendment unless it's amended to not include people running for office, which I have a problem with precluding people from doing that if they wish. President Hanna, on the amendment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I I share Vice President Bourne's concerns, uh, and may I ask our city attorney a question? Please. I mean, is, is it within our rights to restrict people as to how their future, their future employment? Yes, I think you can uh, okay. preclude them from being hired again by the city. As to whether you can prevent them from running for elected office, yeah. I would say no. Okay, thank you. So then, that motion that, that would, oh, by Vice President Bourne's suggestion is it, should not be made. We got two issues going on. One, any, any, anyone that's offered the early retirement cannot be hired within a period of two years after they take their early retirement. Now we're going back and saying they can if they run for office, but they can't if they get hired. I don't, well, please explain that. I don't think that, that hasn't been acted on. I mean, uh, that's been suggested by Alderman Warren, but I think, I don't think constitutionally the council can prevent someone from running for an elected office. Right. You know, there, there's statutory uh, criteria for people running for elected office, and I don't think the council can unilaterally say that uh, because an individual was an employee of the city that they can't run for an elected office. Uh, I do think you can prevent or, or state that uh, they can't come back as an employee uh, or an officer of the city, but uh, I don't think you can prevent them from running for elected office. So then there's no need to change your, I, I'm okay. taking them in the order, I'll oh, start. Owen Ryan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, I, dis I disagree with uh, uh, having restrictions um, to, to say that they cannot be employed by the city period for, for two years after leaving office. Um, a couple years back, uh, I came up with an anti-cronyism re resolution, which was basically aimed at us aldermen that we weren't hired by the city after we left our elected positions. And, and what we did with that is, is we came to a, a decision uh, in agreement that nobody, any, any former alderman could not be hired by the city without a three-quarters vote of the council. Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're looking in the future to also save more money with the department, possibly by using some retired officers um, when we can renegotiate with the, the police union, possibly use some of these retired officers for the parade routes. Um, yeah, we can, we can use these, these, these retired folks to save the city money. So to, to basically exclude them from any employment with the city, I don't think is right, because we, we could have some true cost savings there, and to totally say, no, you can't work for the city for two years makes no sense. I would say that if it does make sense, that three quarters of the council would see that it does make sense. So I would like to offer a friendly amendment to that, that rather than restricting it for two years with for re restricted for two years or with a three-fourths vote of the council. Because, I mean, they, we may have some real cost savings that are coming up that we can use retired police officers for. Why not take advantage of it? If I, I would think this council or any future council has enough sense that it would uh, uh, approve something if it does indeed uh, make sense. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh, the amendment actually refers to the buyout program only, is the way I, I phrased it. But uh, I would, and I would maybe, just to go along with, with Attorney McLean, add um, a non-elected positions in there just to make it clear. And uh, I would agree with, uh, if, to follow that amendment, to have a three-quarter approval of the council to bring money someone back for employment at the time. Okay, so we don't have to go back. Why don't, we restate, why don't you restate your motion? And then if we can get a okay. second to that. <laughs> okay. I say that uh, an employee benefiting from this program be restricted from future employment to a non-elected position with the city for a period of two years from date of termination. And if this uh, restriction can be, let me Steve, help me, overruled by two-thirds or three-quarter rule of the uh, vote of the council, whatever it's appropriate. Three-quarters. Three-quarter approval. Okay. Thank you. Motion and second. Under discussion on that motion only. On addition. Um, thank you, Your Honor. You know, we do have a hiring freeze here until the end of next year. In the, in the city, the council will have to, would have to vote on every employee hire anyway for the next year and a quarter. So I just get the sense that this is treating these seven fine individuals with 220 years of experience serving this city kind of shabbily. To think that there's some grand conspiracy of they're going to come in and swoop up taxpayer money by leaving the city and coming back in and the old double dipping conversation we've heard is just a little disconcerting to me, frankly. If we're losing, if the argument is we shouldn't do this because we're losing all these years of experience, but oh no, we can't let it work for the city again, ever. That just seems to be somewhat contradictory to itself. So I just think it's a shabby way to treat people where if we need them, we could call on them. They couldn't, according to this, this amendment, work for Sue Richards at a polling place to help out this city for 100 bucks for like 26 hours a day worth of work. I, I just don't, I just think it's, it's putting a cloud over individuals who have done nothing but honor this city and brought this proposal to us in a matter of honor to, to put this cloud over their head. I just, uh, it doesn't accomplish anything, it doesn't serve anything except, I think, uh, tarnish the, their efforts. Thank you. Okay, I will call the roll on the motion as amended. Vote in favor, approves the, the early retirement plan with the amendment that people are not, <laughs> no? Just the oh, amendment? Just I'm sorry, that's right, I'm sorry, that's right. On the amendment only. Please read the amendment so we can get it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, there's been a uh, lot well, of Well, something to the paraphrase to the effect that the amendment would restrict employees taking this early retirement program 
from working with, for the city for a period of two years from termination, um, except as a non, or as a non-elected person, or with three quarters approval of the council. Is that basically what you're saying? Yes. So an I vote would do that. Okay. okay. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clionis. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. No. Boren. Aye. Decker. No. Gisha. No. Hannah. No. Nine eyes, six nose. Motion carries. I need a motion to pass the resolution as amended. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion on the motion as amended, Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I guess I just want to state um, I, I have concerns about this plan as well, and um, I, I'm just not certain that the money that we are expecting to save or whatever is going to to go for what it's intended to go for. Um, that concerns me. I, I feel strongly that if, if we can reorganize with an incentive plan, I guess I'd like to look again at reorganizing maybe without the incentive plan as well. So thank you. Next we have Alderman Clavius. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I also have some problems with this uh, particular proposal. Um, I see it for a number of reasons as troublesome. It sets a precedent. Are we going to be buying out or paying out uh, different uh, department heads every year? This become an, expect an expectation of these people that, well, I'll just come and say, I, this is the package I want, and I'll get it. Uh, another thing is uh, I'm not sure we are going to be saving money. We're going to be paying it out of this budget, this uh, 309. We'll be coming out of this budget, out of our operating funds. It's not going to be something that we pay off in the long term. It's going to be out right out right now. Um, I also think that ask ourselves the question: Is mathematics the only reason we make decisions? Uh, you know, if it's cheaper or it looks cheaper or it looks like a better deal, is that the only reason we would reorganize the police station in this manner? I do think the police station needs to be reorganized. I had some concern when the representative from the police association spoke about. Um, his uh, concerns that this could be happening too fast or that we wouldn't be doing things in the right way so we would be leaving the department exposed without enough uh, leadership and without enough experience and that we'd be taking some chances. Uh, as we know, we don't move fast in government and uh, he was you know, asking for uh, a very quick movement and I'm not sure that we're ready to do that without a lot of looking at the structure in the organization. So uh, I appreciate his, his comments, and I'm not sure we can give him that a speedy a response. And I am concerned about our liabilities and responsibilities to the citizens of Sheboygan with some leadership still in place. And if we can let this move through at, at, at attrition, where people retire when they're ready to retire, and we move them in place, their replacements in place with a logical and uh, sensible and reasoned pace we might be doing the city more good. Thank you. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I really appreciate Detective Walsh taking time. He, uh, it was several months ago that the police chief approached me on this issue, and uh, I had pretty much the same concerns that Detective Walsh had. Uh, but the police chief has assured me uh, that he does have a succession plan. Uh, that his police department is prepared to, to step up. In fact, uh, he used the example now that often he and, and uh, Deputy Chief Shervin are, are off at conferences and the police, chief, the police department doesn't stop. There's a whole method by which they continue to manage and there's a line of command. Uh, so I, have, I trust police, uh, police Chief Kirk. He's assured me that there is a succession plan in place. He assured me that this is the best way to get more police officers on the street. Uh, I assure uh, Detective Walsh that I will be diligent in making sure that we get those officers on the street. Thank you, President. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I concur with uh, Alderman Hanna. 
you know, the, the police department is, 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 the structure of it is like a military organization. Uh, in the military, when one person leaves, a, leaves a, a, an office, another person moves in. You know, if they're, if they're out in the field and one person happens to be a casualty, the next guy steps up. Police department is structured in the same type of fashion. It doesn't take in the, in the police department months and months and months for somebody to step into that next higher position. The, the, the big question here is going to be filling those lower positions because we have to get some people hired and get them on board. And that will be our job as a council, provided that this passes, to make sure that we approve that and that we get the ball rolling on that. I'm going to support this. Thank you. Alderman uh, Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've already spoken this item, of course. But uh, there was one part of it I, I, I didn't speak to, and that was the reorganization. And nobody agrees more about the reorganization than I do. It's something that should have been done many years ago. I've always maintained that the police department in many ways is extremely top heavy, and I, of course, have personal insight into that having been worked there. When I started in the department in 1963, the staffing level was much lower than it is now. Each shift had a, a lieutenant and a sergeant. Now we have a captain, a lieutenant, and a sergeant. We had one captain that took the job that uh, is now occupied by a deputy chief. At one point, we had three deputy chiefs on the department. So reorganization is really uh, very much in order. But I'm not convinced that if we turn this buyout down, that this can't happen anyway. I don't understand why, if, we, if this buyout is not passed, why we can't go ahead with the reorganization anyway. In fact, I question as to why it wasn't done years ago. I, I think everybody there in the department itself agrees that uh, there's a lot of, if you want to call it that, dead wood that maybe should, the system should be refined and that we need to have probably a lower staffing level. So I would have much preferred it if this could have been presented in two different documents because there are people in this chamber right now that are against the buyout but are very much in favor of the uh, reshuffling uh, of the police department. And it would have given these people a chance or a voice to be able to express that opinion. But now we've got them both lumped together. It's, it's being treated as one item when, in my opinion, it's actually two separate entities. So uh, this is why, basically, I can't support it, because I can't support the buyout. But I certainly do support a reorganization that's badly needed. Thank you. All we did next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to go backwards, I guess. You can't do the reorganization without the buyout. It's that simple. You can't do one without the other. When you have, at nobody's fault, but just out of sheer baby boomer bubble, when you have seven individuals representing roughly 10% of the entire city budget, Unless you remove that, you have no money to reorganize. This reorganization makes it more of a pyramid with the management on the top and adds dollars for the bottom. I can't stress enough. You all have your budget books. You have last year's budget books and this year's budget books. You cannot have more officers on the street unless we do this. So if you want more officers on the street, you vote yes for this. If you want less officers on the street, you vote no on this. It really comes down to that basic fact. I appreciate Matt Walsh's comments. He's absolutely right. Being vigilant on the, on the rehirings that will be available with freeing up these dollars is all of our responsibilities in this room. And I illustrated for the, both of the committees the immediate hires and the remainder going to patrol and detectives. We have a serious need for more detectives. There's no money to hire them, zero. And this gives us money to do it. We have a serious need, as, as Matt Walsh from the SPPA noted, for officers on the street. We, we, we addressed some of this last year. Many of us were in this room or the back room. We swore in six additional new officers. It worked. The money, every money, dollar from last year's uh, early retirement buyout went right back to the police department, plus some. So it worked from that sense last year. As far as management leaving, this was brought to us by the chief. It was a plan by the chief and the deputy chief. If anybody believes that the chief would, would uh, take a check and put the city in peril, don't know Chief Kirk very well. Um, and as far as leaving us with a 
vacuum of management. I thought Alderperson Ryan spoke to that very well. Top managers hire top people. And a, a suggestion was made about private industry. If you had your entire, half of your board of directors or management team leave, uh, I can tell you in our company, a five and a half billion dollar company, if that happened, I wouldn't sweat for a second. Because if you're a good manager, you hire good people who are prepared to step up, you want them to step up. The chief spoke very well about the excitement in the department right now and, and how it's, it's been a positive thing internally to them. How he spoke about the safety is his number one concern. And he's, he's ultimately um, satisfied that, that there will be no safety risk to the citizens of Sheboygan in doing this. Uh, these questions were answered at all these committees. Uh, I know we had a lot of aldermen there. Perhaps we should have a lot more there. It were, they were important talks by the chief and by the deputy chief. And actually, the money doesn't come out of the 09 budget. It comes out of the 08 budget. It has to be paid by December 31st. Uh, we start paying it back in the 09 budget. So we can't reorganize because we don't have any money to reorganize and to add more officers. So it really comes down to if you vote for this, you're in favor of more officers on the street. If you vote no, then uh, the, the complaints are there by the citizens. The complaints might be there about this early retirement buyout, having to pay all this money. But I'll tell you, those same people will complain a lot more when there aren't enough officers in the street. So a no vote does not put more officers on the street. And I think this council has stood for a lot of things over the last couple of years. But that number one thing has been, has been uh, something we've all spent a lot of time and energy on. And a yes vote puts them on the street. If you don't want to vote yes, want to vote no, then there's, there's 50,000 people in this community to explain why there's no more officers on the street that we need. Alderman Rindfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have to follow that one up. That's going to be tough. Um, I think, though, the argument of um, a yes and a no vote and what it means uh, is the opinion of one alderman sitting next to me. Uh, I think it's perhaps uh, a bit uh, insulting to the work that you as mayor have done and can continue to do, us as a council can continue to do, uh, and the police department as a department can continue to do. Uh, no one here is for more crime. No one here is for less officers. Um, but uh, as Alderman Clayuna said, we are losing a vast amount right away. As Alderman Wangaman did say, um, if it was possible to do two separate documents. These are ideas that need to be taken into account. And to simply rule them out at this point in time, because we have a vote right now, I think is a little short-sighted. Um, again, if, it, if, it, if there was the retirement plan and reorganization, that's great. But the, the buyout is the concern that I have at this point in time. Um, one, I'm still not convinced that the numbers are there immediately for this. Um, it may be, uh, but I don't think that last year's experiment doing so, the numbers that we got to do the buyout um, shows that it's, it's not as effective as, as it can be. It's one way to, to, to do it, uh, to reorganize. Uh, but I give the police chief some credit to come to um, this council, to your office, Mr. Mayor, uh, and suggest this. I mean, it's a very bold statement to say that they're willing to work with the taxpayers, work with the, the, the leadership of the city to, uh, uh, to propose something. Uh, and I give them great credit for that. Um, as well, but I think uh, the precedent that, our, that uh, Alderman Kalinas had mentioned is, is something that we're, we're going to run down the slippery slope. If we're going to look at other departments to do some reorganization as well, they won't come to us unless there is some kind of management buyout uh, clause in that aspect. Uh, and I think that's, that's something that can be dangerous at, uh, down the road, is if we go to public works or other departments say, okay, now you're up, we have some money, we're going to buy you out now for retirement as well. Uh, I think Long term, we're going to find more and more of that. And to me, the moral issue comes down to this this year. Uh, within the budget, uh, we will be paying people to retire. At the same time, we'll be laying people off without any benefit whatsoever in public works. Uh, so we're telling the union people that you're not important enough to pay to retire. We're just going to let you go. We're going to tell management people, thank you for your service. Here's an extra bonus to retire at this point in time. And I think that's, that's something very dangerous, too, and especially in these times of uh, uh, taxpayers are looking at themselves, they're looking at their own jobs being the part, they're looking at the city watching out for, for them as well. Um, and, and we're basically telling that lower level, that union people, that we're not there to support you. Uh, we're going to let you go. But we're going to look at the management and say, here you go, thanks again, and a pat on the back. So I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Olman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a uh, point of order here, I'm not sure, but the original doc isn't in our packet, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam City Clerk, but the issue before us is whether we offer 
a retirement package, and I hear a ton of discussion about a reorganization plan. I don't believe that's technically part of the document in front of us. So just a, I guess just a thought here as we pursue discussion on the subject matter. I, I've allowed that discussion because it bears directly <coughs> on the on the, uh, the resolution that you have in place. The, 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 it, uh, it's the direct, it has a direct bearing to, to the discussion there, so I, I will allow that. Thank you. Next we have Alderman Wagner, the second time, sir. Two, two times speaking on just, the issue. Just one last comment. I have to take issue with Alderman Gisha's statement. And uh, he's an expert on finance, and I can't balance my checkbooks. I have to, you know, bow to him on that. But I think I know a little bit more about the police department. And he suggests that we can't have a reorganization unless we spend a whole bunch of money. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you would hand me tomorrow's roster, I could put five men on the street, and it wouldn't cost a dime. Just through reassignment. That's all it would take. It's just reassignment. We could put five officers on the street tomorrow, and it wouldn't cost us a dime. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to reluctantly support this tonight. Uh, and the, the part of it that I don't like is also the buyout. I heard from a retired police officer today that's been retired for many years that worked with Alderman Wangaman when he was on the force. His comment, comments to me were, shame on all of them. It does not show a lot of class uh, after they're paid top wages, top benefits, and almost an 11% retirement fund funded by the taxpayers. He said it does not show a lot of class on any seven of them to have to be bought out to leave the, the police department. But I am going to support this, although reluctantly, because I understand that it's the only way that the reorganization is going to take place. But uh, this is a, probably one of the most difficult decisions I've had to make since I've been on the council because I do not like having to spend $309,000 to get people to leave early. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I, I think everybody has some reservations about the, the so-called buyout. Um, everybody does. You'd rather, you'd rather have uh, something that costs you nothing than something that costs you money. However, with the buyout, in the long run, we are going to be saving money and putting more officers on the street. Um, this is a way of facilitating it, of making it happen a heck of a lot faster than if we waited several more years through attrition, which will cost us more money. So, you know, as distasteful as it may be to some people to have a $300,000 buyout, this is the way to facilitate the process. And that's why I'm supporting it. Thank you. Well, I guess your second time also. Thanks. Uh, just a, a quick note on precedent. This doesn't set any sort of precedent. We as a council don't have to do this ever again, uh, ever. Uh, we, can, we can decide to do it. There is a big difference between management and union, uh, mediation, arbitration laws, etc. It's our decision whether we do it ever, ever again. It's, there's no precedent regarding this. Um, regarding, uh, and I do have just huge amounts of respect for older person Wangaman, my seatmate here. And he's right. He, uh, uh, I'm not an expert on finance. Um, I can't balance my own checkbook either. Uh, uh, and I'm also not an expert in the police department. And I would encourage Alderman Wangaman, if he has such ideas, I spent four months of my, three months of my summer last year doing the first early retirement plan with Alderman um, Hanna. I've spent the last two and a half months on this plan if there is another idea, I don't see anybody bringing it up. I don't see anybody else digging in on this. If you have those ideas, don't keep them to yourself. If you have an idea to put five or six officers on the street, I think we'd all love to hear them. And, uh, and until that time, uh, we have to find some way to do this. And this is the only way, uh, it's the only way at hand. Um, the, uh, the final point is, Regarding the dollars, uh, with Alderman Bourne and with Alderman Ryan, I, I dislike uh, spending money for things but it, like this. But it's kind of like buying milk at the mini mart. It costs you a few cents more, but you pay for the convenience. Right now, the convenience for us is they've come to us, the police department have come to us with this plan. This isn't 
Alderman Gish's plan or Alderman Hanna's or Mayor Perez's plan. This is 100% the police department's plan. It's convenient for us to take advantage of this plan so that we can reach our ultimate goal. It is not convenient for us to wait another five or 10 years for natural attrition because we will get no benefit. We will have no additional officers on the street next year. There is no money. And uh, again, that's why I say a vote for yes is for more officers on the street. Okay. And second time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim this. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to let you know that my vote no doesn't say I don't want more officers on the street. I do want more officers on the street. I would like them on the street because we have people offering to retire rather than being at, uh, buying, bought out to retire. So thank you. Alderman Kilson, second time. Thank I you, think Mr. Too. Mayor. Thank you so much. And I have to uh, echo the sentiments. I, too, want more officers on the street, but I feel that uh, Alderman Wangaman did offer a, a way to, to reorganize. There are people who have ideas, and I've always supported the police department, and, um, and, and I think there are ways that we can come up with a reorganization without having to uh, go through this incentive, this incentive plan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, second time to we leave. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, an idea, if we want more officers on the street, why don't we take the $309,000, instead of giving it to people that are gonna retire, add, take that amount of money, and hire some officers and put them on the street. Thank you. Where do you get the money, Mayor? Uh, so that if this doesn't happen, please address the chair when you're recognized. There are no more, I wanna make one comment, a couple of comments, because if, uh, judging from the uh, healthy, healthy discussion that I, that I think uh, needed to occur. Uh, uh, it may be a close vote, and in the event that there's a tie, I will vote to support the, the, uh, the early retirement. Um, you, you have to remember that, that I was an alderman uh, s several years before I became mayor. Not once, not once did I hear any other alderman talk about reorganization, and when they did, there was no reorganization occurring. Uh, Chief Kirk, has assured me several times public safety will not be negatively impacted. His reorganization will put more police officers on the street, which is everything I hear all the time. And I expected, I didn't know how much, but I expected calls and emails when this idea was leaked out or came out in the paper. I can honestly say I had three. Three people call me and two were in favor and one was not. There may have been other people I called. I did not get to talk to him, but I don't think that there were. So that tells me that, yes, there may be some disagreement on the community, but it may be coming from a different direction for, for different reasons. Again, if there's a tie, I will vote to support it on the basis that Chief Kirk, is there a cell phone going off here? <laughs> on the basis that Chief Kirk has assured me that this is a great way to reorganize the police department and put more police officers on the street. Madam, please call the roll. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 10 ayes, 5 noes. Motion carries. Moving along. 1441 by salaries and grievances, recommending authorizing an early retirement program in the police department for 2008 and authorizing the mayor and the interim director of human resources to offer the benefits to qualifying police department employees. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Do we all we go ahead and do this again, or do we just, just file a, our document? Just accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. I accept and adopt and put... You put just file. You, that's not what you wrote on here, oh, Susan. Sorry. <coughs> Please make a motion to file. I move that we file this. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the motion to file being that 1440 has taken care of the matter? <coughs> Please call the roll. Kittleson. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. 
Right. Gisha, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1442 by salaries and grievances recommending directing the city to immediately begin recruitment for a director of human resources and labor relations. Alma Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. When this came to, um, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage and that's it. Accept and adopt the work committee. And accept and adopt the RC, I'm sorry. Thank you, is there a second? Aye. Second, under discussion. Thank you again, Your Honor. When this came to salary and grievance, we were very eager to go ahead and start recruiting for uh, an HR director. We truly had thought it was going to work out with the county, and Mike Collard truly thought it was going to work out, but the County Board of Supervisors said, no, it's not going to work out. So I'm eager to get going on, on hiring, looking for somebody for an HR director, and I think Susan Hart is more, perhaps more eager than we are. Uh, also, part of this um, resolution, uh, there's, it says the Committee on Salary and Grievance be responsible for this action and that this committee begin interviewing potential human resource consultants upon approval of this resolution, which means we're looking for a headhunter. But if we go ahead and do that, which I'm not yay or nay on that part of it, um, I would like to be sure that if our municipality magazine or our Sheboygan website gets an HR director, we don't still have to pay a headhunter for what he hasn't done. Thank you. Okay, please call roll. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1443 by salaries and grievances bringing forth the document providing raises for non-represented employees for 2009 and forwarding the attached substitute resolution to the Common Council with no recommendation. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept the RC and move that the substitute resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and? Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, why was the one paragraph taken out? Alderman uh, Montemayor. Thank you, Alderman Klein Because there is another document coming up toward the end of our agenda that takes care of that, therefore. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to amend the document to reflect a, a raise increase of rather than 2.3% to make it 0.81%. Is there a second? Second? Under discussion on the amendment. Under discussion. And the reason I, the, the, I guess the, the reason I come up with that number is our fellow alderman, Corey Bell, came up with a number, did a little research on it, and looking at the average Sheboygan constituent median, in, median income raises over the last eight years, their average increase over that period of 1999 to 2007 was 0.81% increase. Now, comparatively speaking, we would have seen our own non-reps here in the city of Sheboygan experience an increase on average annually of 5.29%. Okay? If you break it down, you're looking at things like over 7% in the fire, over 6% in the police department, um, sit, <clears throat> excuse me, city hall 6%, transit over 9% average increase during that time period. I don't think it's fair when our average constituents are earning less than 1% of an increase per year that we're averaging five, six, and nine times that across our own city payroll. Uh, the Sheboygan Press put out a nice article here just this past weekend. It's actually Friday. And they document some numbers here. Over a period of 2006 to 2000, or 2000 to 2006, the average uh, state four-person four family lost $6,000 in their, their take-home pay. During that same period of time, using a 5.29% 5, 5 increase, the average city of Sheboygan employee would have earned over $18,000 of an increase on their wage. So again, we've got Sheboygan, city of, she, city, uh, excuse me, state of Wisconsin, four-person four families losing $6,000 over the period of six years. And for the same period of time, a, a city of Sheboygan employee would have earned 
18,000 on top of that. Those numbers just don't add up. And everybody watching this, everybody in this room is well aware of the financial times that we speak of. I just don't think it'd be right that we'd be uh, passing along such a raise, even if 2.3%, as meager as that might seem comparatively. It would take the average Sheboygan citizen nearly 40 years to catch up given the same starting point at the rate that they've been getting increases. So think about those sort of numbers. Another thing on top of that, and everybody here again is aware, of, there's been a lot of talk over the last three weeks about 401ks just losing trillions and trillions of dollars of value. The average city Sheboygan employee has no impact being that they're part of the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. So they have no effect on the retirement savings. So I think that's some food for thought as we look to make a decision here. Thank you. Uh, on the amendment, please read the amendment. Uh, to make the raise to 0.81% instead of 2.3%. There is a motion and a second. It's gone under discussion. Please call the roll. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? No. Nine eyes, six no's. Motion carries. I need a motion to um, <coughs> accept and adopt as amended. I mean, put the resolution upon its passage as amended. So moved. Second. Second. Under discussion as amended. Please call the roll. Montemayor? No. Rinfleisch? No. Ryan? Surik? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? No. Ann Meyer? No. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. 1443. By salaries and grievances, bringing forth the document providing raises for non-represented employees for 2009. And yeah, we're still in the that's, same. That's all we just did. That's just the one we got. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually wanted you to start all over again. Sorry about that. Ordinance has introduced number 10. 1444 and 45 lies over. Matters laid over 11, 1225. RO number 2050809 by the City Plan Commission for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of the paved north-south alley between South 7th Street and 8th and South 8th Street and bordered on the south by Clara Avenue. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1359, RO number 2290809 by the City Plan Commission relative to rezoning the property located at 2019 and 2021 North Avenue from Class Urban Industrial to Class Urban Commercial. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you again. I move to accept and file the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and? Second. Second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1335, resolution number 121-0809 by all the persons Hannah, Rinfleisch, Heidemann, Kittleson, and Ryan, authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to accept a traffic safety grant for OWI enforcement in the amount of $20,000 from the State of Wisconsin Bureau of Traffic Safety. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to file this document. Second. There's motion and second to file. Any discussion? President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's not that they wouldn't want to work with this. It's just they could not fulfill the requirements. Thank you very much. 
Any other discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1351, resolution number 1220809, by all the persons Gisha, Clayunas, Born, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing appropriation for distribution of TIF number eight excess increments, establishing revenue and appropriations for grant from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism for advertising relating to YMCA National Tournament. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Uh, I would like to ask um, Paula Enders to return to the podium once again. There's a kind of a curious item on here that uh, th there was some discussion about prior to the meeting. Uh, one of the uh, distributions of funds from TIF 8 was to the Kohler Public School System in the amount of $183,425. And uh, for the sake of the public and the rest of the aldermen, and frankly, even little myself, it was explained to us in finance, but if Paulette could help explain that rather odd distribution and donation to our friends to the West. <laughs> Paulette, would you please come up? Thank you. Um, it just happens in the boundary of that district, a part of it includes the Kohler School District. And so the surplus funds end up going back to that taxing entity. During the entire life of the district, we withheld those tax dollars and we could keep it in the TIF for those improvements. But now that it's closed out and there's surplus, some of those monies go back to that taxing jurisdiction. Okay, thank you, Paulette. And we do have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Sirk? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. For Hasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1353, resolution number 1230809, by older persons Gisha, Clayunas, Bauk, Boren, and Montemayor, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget Establish an appropriation for design and construction of stormwater ponds in connection with development agreement. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under uh, discussion. As explanation, I'm sorry? Under discussion. Thank you. As explanation, these were funds already budgeted, already set aside to do these retention ponds. I believe the project's on the north side of Sheboygan. It's now time to do that part of the housing development. <clears throat> It's a rather large chunk of money and I think deserved a little bit of explanation. Thank you. Kohler's getting none of it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had you all, so nobody heard you. Okay, there is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Zurich. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1344, General Ordinance Number 590809, by all the persons Hannah, Rinfleis, Ryan, Heidemann, and Kittleson, relating to prohibited turning so as to add a no left turn sign, school days only 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. zone along the north side of Georgia Avenue to prevent traffic from proceeding west on Georgia Avenue when exiting the north driveway at Horace Mann Middle School. President Hannah. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Mo motion and second under discussion. There, there is none. Oh, oh, President Hanna. Yeah, just one comment. I, I did want to take time out to thank Officer Edson for bringing both of these items to the attention of public protection and safety. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunas, Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Surik, and Vanderweel. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1345, General Ordinance Number 600809, by all the persons Hannah, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Heidemann, and Kittleson, relating to prohibited turning so as to add a no left turn, school days only, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. zone for westbound traffic on Georgia Avenue upon approach to the North Driveway at Horace Mann Middle School. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There be a none, please call the roll. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Decker? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Kleinis? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Thank you. Ryan? Aye. Surik? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhassel? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1364, General Ordinance Number 610809, by all the persons Gisha, Bout, repeating section 29-115 of the 1975 Municipal Code relating to the Salary Wage Compensation Program for non-represented employees. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the general ordinance be accepted and adopted. Motion in. Second. Second under discussion. Uh, as a point of explanation, Your Honor, um, this goes hand in hand with a previous resolution we had that uh, accelerates the process of hiring an HR director now that the the county uh, has um, made their decision. It, this resolution effectively, not effectively, it does, eliminates our entire non-rep pay plan that we've been playing ping pong with here for the last year and a half and forces us to deal with it from scratch with the new HR director. They kind of meld together. Uh, unless we get rid of it and it's kind of universally understood that it's, there's some need for that, uh, even from the department heads, uh, they've urged a lot of that at the meetings. So this gets rid of that uh, non-rep plan and we start anew uh, with input from the non-reps, with input from the council, with input possibly from the community as directed by a new HR director which we passed on the previous resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I certainly hope that that is what, truly what will happen, but it, you know, this, it hasn't worked out that way. So. Um, I feel very strongly here that we're doing we're doing things maybe that that aren't right, and um, uh, I, I won't I won't support getting rid of this um, language in the general ordinance. Thank you. Okay. Well, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I too would not support this. I believe that uh, the pay plan does have its faults. There's some problems with it. I admit that. I'd rather see us have some program. Uh, in place or to present to uh, fill the void and then perhaps eliminate the plan as it stands right now. Thank you. Thank you. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Boren. Aye. Decker. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. No. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Surik. No. Vanderweel. Verhasselt Aye. and Wangaman. Aye. Ten ayes, five noes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. <coughs> 1446 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Kathy Stabo, claims director of Transit Mutual Insurance Company in Wisconsin, stating that they have investigated the claim of Eduardo Contreras for injuries and or property damage and have determined that the city of Sheboygan is not responsible for the alleged damages as presented in the notice of claim and request a formal disallowance of this claim. That will be referred to risk management. 1447 is a communication from Dan Binversee, Clean Clearwater Inspector for the city, requesting that their plumbing association be permitted to reserve the Blue Harbor Convention Center under the city's free days for their state plumbing conference to be held October 27 through 29, 2010. That will go to finance. 1448 is a communication from Alder Person for Hasselt, along with a recent Sheboygan Press article stating that Wisconsin families are experiencing their worst sustained earnings decline since the early 1980s. That is being referred to finance and salary and grievances. And 1449 is a uh, for, uh, an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that will be referred to where do you want this one to go? Loan licensing? Loan licensing. licensing? I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. So we stand adjourned. <laughs>